So, what is Kubernetes? What is K8S? K3S? K0S? What is Helm? If you're curious about any of these different implementations for Kubernetes, what Kubernetes is, what Helm is, and just want to get a better understanding about Kubernetes and some of the leading implementations, watch this video and I'll explain as much as I can. Hi, I'm Cameron Elliott, and I help developers and their managers to bulletproof, scale, and decomplexify their WebRTC systems. If you would, please hit subscribe and ring the bell below. And if you visit my website, you can get my top 10 tips guide to managing WebRTC and subscribe to my email newsletter. Okay, let's get into it. What is Kubernetes? Kubernetes is actually a software package that Google developed and they first released in 2014. And it helps you deploy and scale and manage containerized applications. So what are containerized applications? <laughs> well, they're applications that consist of a bunch of different packages in containers that work together to implement your system. So a really simple example would be a two container application where you might have a container for a database, say Postgres, and you have a container for a web server, say NGINX. And for this application, you might have high expectations and you might need those web server containers to auto scale. Kubernetes can help you do that. You might just run one Postgres database container and when things start up, you might have one web server container, but if the traffic and the load gets high enough, you might go ahead and start a second or a third or fourth and so on web server containers. So that's what Kubernetes does. So really quickly, I want to talk about containers versus virtual machines and what containers are. So when you go to AWS or Google Cloud, or Microsoft's Azure, and you turn on an instance, you've got a virtual machine. And it's going ahead and it's emulating a whole computer system. And so you can run an entire operating system inside that virtual machine. Containers are a little different. Containers actually just really provide an abstraction or emulation of the operating system, not of the whole computer. And so you can go ahead and run your database application on that container, or you can go ahead and run your web server application on a container. And there's images for those containers, so an image for a database or a web server, and you can go to, say, Docker Hub, for example, and look at the hundreds of different, or maybe even thousands of different images for containers that allow you to, to download and deploy a container really quickly using images. So what's the killer feature of Kubernetes? There's probably a little bit of disagreement about this, but in my mind, the killer feature of Kubernetes is really that it just enables these large-scale multi-container applications. And I talked about an application earlier where you've got three components, a database like Postgres, a web server like NGINX, and a network-based key value store like Redis. So deploying and managing that without Kubernetes and having it scale without Kubernetes is doable, but it really involves building your own system where Kubernetes gives you the infrastructure for deploying that, managing it, monitoring it, and then having parts of it auto-scale, like for example, the web server. If you think you're gonna get high traffic and that traffic might vary. You might need one web server at times, or you might need 10 web servers at times. And it's really nice because Kubernetes controls whether you've got one web server going based on traffic or five or 10 web servers going based on traffic. So what is Helm for Kubernetes? Helm is a tool for installing and managing Kubernetes applications. So I've been talking about this example with a database, a web server, and a key value store like Redis. Well, using YAML files and Helm, you could go ahead and define that whole application and install it in a, 
in a few simple steps using Helm. So what is KAS? KAS just refers to the original Kubernetes open source package from Google. And it's what you're going to be running if you're deploying on DigitalOcean, Azure, Google Cloud Platform, or uh, Amazon's AWS. So what is K3S? K3S is um, it's another implementation of Kubernetes, but it's meant to be simpler, quicker to, quicker to get started with, and easier to use. And it's pretty exciting, in my opinion, from that perspective. I've gotten a K3S cluster up and running in a matter of minutes. And that's, that's pretty cool because my experience with deploying the full Kubernetes and working with it on cloud providers is that it, it takes a lot of time, there's a lot of things to fiddle, a lot of things can go wrong. So K3S can be great, whether you're working with <clears throat> virtual machines in the cloud or even on local, like say, a one, two, or three node uh, cluster at your local location. So that's what K3S is. So what is K0S? K0S is very similar to K3S, but it's really from a competing team. It's, um, and the killer feature, in my opinion, is really the ability for you to install it very quickly, to get it going rapidly, to not to have to worry about a lot of different things. And I think one of the features they tout with K0S is that it has very few dependencies on the host operating system other than the particular kernel that you're running. So which should you use? K8S, K0S, K3S? It's hard to say. Um, if you're doing development, well, if I'm doing development, I'm really gonna be working, trying to work with K3S or K0S, probably off a of local hardware, and um, just get to the point where I can work on developing my application and I'm not focused on, or I'm not gonna be distracted by learning Kubernetes management and Kubernetes administration. But really, when you go to deploy in the auto-scaling environments, like AWS or Google Cloud or Azure, I think you're pretty much limited to K8S, the, the original Kubernetes distribution, unless you go build your own cluster directly on virtual machines, which you can do with K0S and K3S. So there's a lot of options. But mostly, think about if you're gonna build your own cluster, either locally or in the cloud, you probably gonna lean towards K0S or K3S. And if you wanna use the off-the-shelf Kubernetes um, managed services in the, you know, in the cloud, you're really talking about K8S or the original Kubernetes from Google. So which one am I choosing? Um, I've tried K3S and K0S, and I have deployed using the full K8S before also. Um, my experience, I'm really tempted to, for my local development environment, to use K0S or K3S. Um, I had a very quick, easy experience with K3S to go ahead and get up a, a small cluster and deploy the, the echo container that's usually used for testing and teaching. Um, I didn't have a great time with K0S. I think that's just because it's so new and I think those issues will be fixed quickly. And I really think it's a great package to watch and to keep an eye on and to experiment with, with running and developing under Kubernetes. But it's still, at this point, it's still got some teething problems. So I'll be, I'll be working with both of those, K0S and K3S. And when I go to deploy on a cloud provider in their managed environment, then I'll be using the original Kubernetes K8S. So that's the big story. Um, if you have input or um, information about any of these Kubernetes distributions that I missed, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Uh, Please, if you found this useful, go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell. At my website, you can go ahead and subscribe to my newsletter or get my free guide on managing cloud-native WebRTC. And that's it for this video. Thanks a lot.